All right, we're in Manchester for Jordan Gill versus Alpha Barrett on the weekend. Very big fight. We're joined by Eddie Hearn, Tony Bellew as well. Eddie, before we talk about the fight card, I have to talk about the big news. Boot tennis. Oh, too, big, big know, news. He actually messaged me last night and said, we've broke the internet. Yeah. And I said, actually can't remember an announcement that had the same kind of noise mm. as this for a long time. There is no one in boxing that doesn't believe that Boots is a pound for pound star. Mm. We just got to make sure the whole world knows about it. We got to make sure that we reach out to the masses and we got to make sure that we get him the, the right fights. It's, it's funny, like boxing has so much negativity. You know, you announce Boots and, and then it's like, yeah, but who are they going to put him in with? Yeah. And when's he going to fight though? It's like, come on guys. Let's have a little bit of yeah, a positivity. Let's celebrate the boot We've got, first, yeah. I believe, and I've said it for a long time, the best welterweight in the world and one of the pound for pound greats. Tell me how you got him. What do you mean? What do you oh, mean? No, you got him. Do you know how long I've been trying to sign oh, boots? That's what I'm saying. Five years. See, right. I, I first I, I watched him probably five years ago. And I was like, this kid's unbelievable. Mm. And I've been grafting and I've been grafting and I've been grafting. He stayed loyal, he he stayed a believer until he realised things were going to pass him by. Yeah. And he took the leap with us and I'm, everybody wanted him, obviously. And I'm just so pleased that Matrim and DAZN get, as I said, a pound for pound talent. And, you know, we've got to make sure that we get this guy in the big fights. Let's take him to Philadelphia yeah. in the summer, wow. headline him, keep him active. But what a fighter. And when you've got someone that good, it's, you know, it's amazing to just know that you've got. But it's going to be hard to match. Did, did, um, did Conor Ben message you? No, not yet. I mean, okay. he's always said that he wants that fight. And I've always said to him, mate, I think you're a fight or two away from yeah. Ennis, purely because he's the best in the division. Um, I hope that Terence Crawford can come back to 47 Ooh. and make that fight, because I do think Crawford is pound for pound number one as well. That's just like a fight for the ages. Mm. But what you have to do with someone with the ability of Jerron Ennis is build him up so that the, the reward's there. The public because knows him. Everybody's going to go, ah. Oh, What's the point in fighting Jerron Ennis? Well, that's what people say when someone's really good. Mm. But when you take a bag of money to them and say, this is the reason to fight Jerron Ennis, sometimes Conversations it Conversations change. Yeah. What, what, there must be a plan, Ed. So is there a date in mind, yeah, first so he of has all? Yeah, so he has a mandatory. We're going to get that dusted off ASAP, okay. June time, back in Philadelphia, and just keep him active. But also, you know, we had a situation with Demetrius Andre a few years ago where no one wanted to fight him. Yeah. So you're getting him out and the activity's good, but you've got to find a way to maneuver the big fights. And we couldn't do it with Demetrius on the, on, for, the, for the reason of no, no one wanted to fight him because the reward wasn't there. Mm. Jerron's a little bit different. He's a welterweight. He's would, already would he established. To, would he go to 54? I think he will in time. Okay. But right now, no, let's try and now. be undisputed at 147. Yeah. You know, if you look at the, the big names, and the divisions right now, it's a bit like lightweight was a, a buzz division. Now they've moved to 40. Mm. So 140 is now the big division in boxing. Welterweight for a long time was one of the flagship divisions. Yeah. Now they're moving to 54. Spence, Crawford, all those guys. So he's now got to go through the likes of Barrios with the WBC, Stanionis with the WBA. They're not massive names. Hopefully mm. we can lure them into unification fights let Boots become undisputed at 147, then chase down the Spences and the Crawfords at also. 54. And by that point, he'll be a big enough name that those fights are worth mega money for. You'll also have to remember the 40s are going to jump as well. Mm. So the yeah. 40 pound fights, they're definitely going to jump. A few yeah. big, they're going to want to, they're, they're well. all going to want to test and face him at some point. I mean, they're all going to rise and go through it. It's just, I, I hate to see a fighter rise too much. Mm. So for someone like Boots, I think, 54, 60 top should be yeah, the limit. Yeah. Nowhere above any of that, but dominate amongst them three weight divisions. And I, and I think, I'm not going to lie, I think yeah, he can. I mean, I don't want to hype him too much, but. And, and, You're about you know, to. But I want to see him be undisputed at 47, 54, and 60. <laughs> Why not? He's honestly got the ability to do it. Like, he's that good. He <laughs> yeah. is that good. There's yeah. no question in that. He has the ability. <laughs> yeah. uh, a tenfold over. I mean, believe you me, you will see what he does to these welterweights. You will see this. No, look, he's, he's a he has everything. He's a but as Eddie said, it's about getting the fighters in the ring. Activity. To prove it. C can we talk about another rumour? Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. Mm. I saw the picture with you and Frank Smith outside the sphere. Uh, what can you tell us? Is there anything at all? What I can tell you is, I mean, sphere, who knows? Mm. But what I can tell you are there are deep discussions going on between Matrim and most valuable promotions yeah. about that fight. Mm. I think that's what all we'll say at the moment. I think we've all 
we all know that is a massive fight. The first fight was one for the ages, sold out Madison Square Garden. I think it's the fight for both yeah. uh, women right now. We'll see where it goes. Sphere, it's a nice story. It would be amazing, but focus on the fight, venue and destination to be confirmed. If it does happen, 135? If it does happen? Uh, or 40. Yeah, I mean, so you why know, we'll go up again? Yeah, I mean, or we do at 136, 137. I okay. mean, Katie has all the belts at 140, so we would like the undisputed to be on the line. Mm -hmm. um, 35, like we said about the other divisions, is freeing up a little bit. Rhiannon Dixon fights Carabajal for a 35 pound belt on this card on yeah. Saturday night. So, um, gonna be interesting, but 35 or 40, but probably at 40 for the tag of Undisputed. All right, final one before we talk about Gil uh, versus Alphabet, which by the way is a fantastic fight. The five versus five yeah. gets announced on Monday. Yes. Yeah? It's done. It's done? It's done. We know who we're putting forward. The flights are booked. Okay. for the fighters to come there's been a few changes and you know i know there's been rumors and he's in no he's not in and um i've seen the promo i saw Ooh, it yesterday i forgot about these promos. you're gonna love I it forgot about you're gonna promos. love this one are you I in think, it yeah of course i'm in it if i wasn't it wouldn't be unbelievable would it yeah, okay so um it is it is amazing the fight card i mean bear in mind that the 5v5 is on the undercard of Bivol against Betterbeard. Crazy. And when That's you see insane. the lineup, it's crazy. It's the best card there has ever been in boxing. Ooh, and we really? keep saying that, don't we? We keep oh, saying really? Because when, I, when you see on, on Monday at the press conference, Bivol Betterbeard and these five fights, you are going to say, this is the best card I've ever seen. Wow. Is there, this is me being greedy, obviously, that six fights. Is there going to be like a prelim card? Oh my god! No, I'm just asking because I mean, like, we know we've had like ten fights I mean, normally on these cards, haven't we? I'm, 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 I'm this guy greedy. delivers. I'm being greedy. I'm being greedy. Yeah, I'm being I greedy. Think there will be. There, there will be. be. I will yeah. be. I, I, I believe so. There'll so. be a couple I of prelims. So. Yeah, yeah. His Excellency delivers, yeah, so I'm yeah. sure there'll be prelims. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, there but will be. you know, I think that um, six championship fights. Scary. On the TV, you know, the live feed and um, the co-main event, the co-co-main event. Yeah. The Coco Co main event. I'm everyone, you know, everyone. unbelievable. They're all main event fights, basically, they are, they are. in we all know one. slots. Do you? We all know one, don't we? Wilder and Zank? No, I, listen, that would mean, Tony, that would mean Wilder Tony, would have to be on the matchroom team. With all due respect, and I still love the guy. I'm not being funny, no. mate, but if they're paying, I think you're playing. <laughs> I won't worry about me. I'm definitely, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely playing if they're playing. But I don't know about Deontay. We'll see. All right, let's talk about what we're here for uh, this Saturday. AO Arena, headlined by Jordan Gill versus Zelfa Barrett. Jordan Gill coming off a career best win against Michael Condon. You predicted, didn't you, that Gill oh, would beat Condon? Me. So a couple of us did he have a conversation. Got one right out of 100. Yeah. Me, him and Frank. Well, all right, thanks for that, Abby. <laughs> don't, don't, don't kick him on while he's down. Well, you're going to get one. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get one right. One it? right a season. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, really good performance from Jordan Gill. Yeah. Has been going through so much that yeah. we didn't know behind the scenes. Yes. So it makes the performance even more special. Yeah. But this is the big step up, I think, with Zelfa Barrett, who's a very big super feather. I don't like it. Don't you? Yeah, I think, I mean, one thing I've seen from Jordan, particularly in this camp and the preparation and, and the interviews, is the confidence. Yeah. I'm not actually sure that's necessarily a great thing. I mean, <laughs> Zelfa is very tricky. He punches from angles and he punches very sharp, very fast. And I think that is a style that could cause problems for Jordan Gill if he gets caught with one of those corkscrew uppercuts that he throws and you know but you know Ben Davison obviously does a great job in camp there and they talk about the power mm. of Jordan Gill now up at 130 he's always been able to punch but he's never he never really had concussive power at no. 26 we saw against Conlon and I know Conlon's past his best but he hurt him a lot in that fight hurt him quick they as actually well. think they're going to stop oh, Zelfa every, Barrett every punch was hit and Conlon, to be totally honest, but understand this: this is a bigger man uh, who's, who's fought at much higher weights than this before. So, and I think I hope I'm wrong, but I think that's going to be the difference. I just think Zelfa about it will grind Jordan down, and and I, and I don't think it's been a good. Do you think ending. he's got to make it a fast pace? Because we saw in the Rakimov fight yeah. that Jordan, uh, that Zelfa started very well. He hurt Rakimov, yeah. and then he got overrun. I get you there, but Jordan's not Rakimov, and mm. he can't impose the kind of pressure, and he can't impose the kind of physical attributes that Rakimov had. Jordan has to kind of box manoeuvre, create a few angles for Zelfa Barrett, and not let him set anything up. That's the keys to victory, but for me, I just think Zelfa Barrett's size and power, unfortunately for, for Jordan, is going to be the determinant factor in this fight. Mm, interesting. Um, Ellie Scottney. 
tries mm. to unify. Um, won't be easy though against. I'm saying it's Leberthurf, Leberth. Yep. Whatever you say. Yeah. Um. Segoline <laughs> Leberg, yeah. we're sticking with. There you all, go. All I know her as is the 18 and 0 world champion. I like that. You know, um, who said in her interview, there's only one person that wins by knockout in this fight, and that's me. Wow. And actually, you know, the remarkable thing about Ellie Scottney is no knockouts, no stoppages mm. in her career so far, but non stop action mm. all the Wins time. Convincingly. And I think this is the kind of fight where you might see her force a stoppage because Leferbera. Yeah. Will come non stop. You know, she's a world champion. This is a unification fight. We want to get an undisputed champion at 122 pounds. You've got uh, Mercado. You've got Erica Cruz. Ooh, we want okay. to see them face off in an all Mexican clash. And then the winner of this fight's the winner. You've got Ramla Ali circling for a shot at, at Mercado as well. So we'll see. But this is a very, very good matchup. Yeah. You know, a real high level matchup. Um, against an 18 and 0 undefeated world champion who can really fight. It's where both ladies are stepping up to the plate, and you're going to find out where they both are. Uh, it's a really, really good fight, and I say someone's always going to go. The great thing about these is, you know, and particularly in the women's code, they're all up for straight unification. You said this before. You know, it's like they don't. Even, it's all they want. Yeah. yeah. Really, and and because you know we ha we haven't got the problems of you know the networks and all the politics. It's just a straight yes. Yeah. yeah. So. And that's great to see. Yeah. So I can make an undisputed champion in two fights. Brilliant. You know, whereas you could take five years in another division. So you are seeing the best fight the best, and it's a great matchup. A big step up, I think, for Rhiannon Dixon. Obviously, yeah. Anthony Collins, Charles, she takes on Karen Karabahau, who fought Katie Taylor a couple of years ago. This is a tough ask. I, I think, think it's a 50-50 fight. Do you? I really okay. do, because Rhiannon Dixon's come on so well. She won the Commonwealth. She won a European. I liked what I saw from Carabajal against Katie Taylor. Mm. She won two or three rounds yeah. in that fight. She's very rangy. She can punch. And Rhiannon is a, is a, a clever southpaw. She's just got to believe in herself. You know, sometimes I think, I think she's starting to now, but for mm. a long time, she sort of questioned what level she was at. She's at world level now, but it's a massive fight for her career. Yeah. I mean, huge fight to become world champion. You've got Beatrice Pereira fighting for the world championship in two weeks. You've got Caroline Dubois probably going to fight for a world Tough championship. One. You know, you talk about unifications get made. This is going to put her in for, for massive Let, fights. Let's not forget it's for also Anthony Crawler's first cornership as a world, yeah. as a world title fight. Yeah. So. That, that's one to I saw some footage of Rhiannon Dixon yesterday. It looked like a tank. Mm. You know, really been working hard with, with Martin Cullen on a, a fitness and strength. But, you know, Carabajal was very active against Katie Taylor. Like she went in there with no fear. She let her hands go. She looked dangerous to me yeah, throughout that fight. And I think Rhiannon's going to be jumping in. It's going to be a really good all-action fight. She's not Katie Taylor. No. No, so, it no makes it a hell, so it makes it a hell of a fight. Mm. How good is it as well is that she's getting out there, Rhiannon, and doing different bits? I saw at the darts, yeah, trying yeah. to like publicise herself a yeah, bit look, more. I think that every fight has a story. Mm. You know, for Rhiannon, she was working for the NHS. She was a pharmacist. You know, was was boxing and didn't really know if her professional career was going to sort of unfold for her. All of a sudden, started to look good. Teamed up with Anthony Crawler. You know, gave up her job to focus full time on boxing, wins the Commonwealth European, now going for the World Championship. She's from Warrington up the road. She yeah. sold several hundred tickets for this opportunity. Wow. She's making good money, and, and this victory would give her the chance to make some serious money. This is the in kind the of backstory yet that we need to get out to the public and yeah. to the masses because also, this is what sells. Yeah, and also I feel that there is also an intrigue and an interest around women's boxing where it's quite unique. I think still, and I think it's great that you're seeing so much participation from girls, that women are out there in the professional yeah. boxing world being in great fights. It's not like we, you know, you're seeing them go in and you know, just sort of trying. They're coming out there for 10 twos and putting it all on the line. Pace and, we're, and we're seeing some great fights. And, and Rhiannon will be the, the same. And Ellie Scottney always in great fights. So you know, it's a great story. She's very marketable um, and, and a world championship belt would give her a big future. I'm By saying. the way, I can see Brandon Scott just right here, and it's great to have him back. And he's plotting to do something crazy, I know, at his press conference and on the night as well. But good to see Brandon Scott yeah, back. Absolutely, yeah. Two hands as well now, because he had surgery, hasn't he? Yeah, so and, it's good to you know, see a good fighter. I yeah. mean, absolutely nuts crazy. as well. Crazy. But a very good fighter. And we didn't just take him on because he wears a Spider-Man outfit at a press conference. That helps. We took him on. Yeah, it does help. But we took him on because he can really fight. And look out as well for you know a good before the cut bell section. 
Jimmy Sainz, yep. three and oh, three knockouts, very heavy handed. Yep. And William Crawler as well. I've got a feeling this kid's going to do four something. Four and oh now, isn't he? Yeah. Four and oh. Four and oh, three knockouts. Started to look really heavy handed. You know, don't, forget, don't forget about Jimmy Sainz's old opponent, Stevie Clark. They yep. faced a, a yep. form of each other's amateur twice. Of tickets. Yep. You know, sold 500 tickets from Liverpool on Saturday. And young Jack Turner oh, as listen. well, who, you know, Tony this has told me time star. and time again. I know he's only a flyweight, but pound for pound excitement. Five and, and punch all, power. Five KOs. He's unbelievable. No, I don't manage him. Okay. No, no I advise him and help him. <laughs> he's a lovely young <laughs> yeah. man. But you should see the text messages. <laughs> <Yeah>. Trust <laughs> me. Trust me. Yeah. Oh, I, else don't manage. Trust me. Each major city needs a star. Like yeah. Manchester needs one. Liverpool. That's Liverpool's next star. Right. Jack Turner. Don't don't switch anywhere Spiteful else. Spiteful little thing. You heard the name. Mate. You heard the name. He, I'll tell you. The boy's an animal. He's vicious. He's. He's yet to get passed around. He's an animal. Yeah. He just right. he just does everyone. We'll see Saturday before the bell. You'll believe me. You'll see. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. I've been told to wrap, so we'll see you on Saturday.